Um, hi world, this is Brenda Lost Aspie Girl, and this is the second part to the video um, I made ab about my diagnosis and the assessment, and this is going to be kind of the backstory leading up to it, to give you guys an idea of my adventures and, and my story. I don't know if that'll give you any, any insight into yourselves. Um, so I was always a weird little girl. Um, I started reading early and I was a voracious reader. Um, I would climb trees with a backpack full of books and just sit up there for hours and, and read. Um, my sister is 13 months younger than me. She was like my constant shadow. Like she would try to, she always say, she would always tell me how she was like, I would, I would plot on you. I, I realize now that I think that the reason that she did that is I, I, I think that when it comes to neurotypicals, there's a, um, there's a give and take that goes on that sometimes I'm not aware of. So I think like sometimes she was seeking attention from me and I didn't understand that is what she needed. So I, um, I would, I would ignore her and I would, um, I would run away and hide and, and I think it like, it, it bothered, like it, 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 tor it, it tormented her. So, it, so, um, as, as a means of retribution, she would, she would, she would think of methodical calculating ways to try to torment me. Um, and I just wanted to get away from her. I mean, I, lo I loved her, but I just, um, we just very different. Like my father always said, um, that I was book smart and she was people smart. She's very, very, she's like the complete opposite of me in that way. Like I watch her with people and it amazes me. People that completely think different than her and everything like that. She can like argue with them and like frustrate them and they still love her because she does it in such a way that she just doesn't, she just knows how, how to do it and how to like immediately say the right thing or whatever. I, I don't have that. But the, the thing that I do have is I, I can, I'm very perceptive because I, what I realized a long time ago is whatever social antenna or, or social radar or sonar or whatever the other people have, um, I don't have that, but I, I am perceptive as, and I can, I can, um, assess people's behavior. And from that, I can figure things out over time. Um, the thing is like, I'll have all this knowledge. I'll, I'll understand sometimes people better than they, I think you know, sometimes than they, better, they even understand themselves because I don't have all those biases that people have and, you know, but, um, I don't know what to do with the information. I don't know how to utilize it in a way that benefits me or the other person and that sometimes is infinitely frustrating. The one thing I am good at is um, buying people presents um, and that is kind of sometimes the way I try to show people I care about them <clears throat> is like I feel I it always I remember when I was younger and my mom like when I got a little bit older and I started like because I was very much a tomboy and my mom always wanted me to play with, with dolls and stuff like that and um, when she would buy me things that I didn't feel like represented like who I felt who I was I would break down crying I would have a full-on meltdown and my father I would he would punish me because he was like you know you're hurting your mom but I was like she's hurting me like the presence that she's buying me shows me that she doesn't even know who her daughter is and that just destroyed me in like a weird way I'm gonna get emotional from this but um <clears throat> so this be it became a thing for me that when if I cared about somebody I wanted to buy them presents but I wanted them to be like the perfect present that became like so important to me that um if I bought somebody something I wanted them to understand that I I I, I understood them like like their their intrinsic core self the part of themselves they, they didn't think anybody else understood I always wanted to try to get them a present and people that like represented that to show them that and, and and the one thing that always made me feel really good is that people would tell me that I bought the most amazing presents um so in that way I was able to kind of communicate this this other interesting aspect of me which I think is I think is unique to people with Asperger's or ASD because I think that we see people in a way that other people don't I think um people I think initially the the whole the whole theory of mind um concept works for other people because I think probably if I took that test when I was a little girl I would have gotten it wrong and I'll get into some of those stories as to why I think that um but I think that even though initially we have difficulty seeing things from our pe other people's perspective at least for myself um what ends up happening is because I don't have any of those any biases or or whatever to like to to, to begin to filter this information once I understand somebody's other 
perspective, sometimes I, I, I can over empathize, but not that they'll necessarily even realize that's what I'm doing. Um, but in my head, that's how it feels because I all of a sudden I can look at things logically. So I can kind of put myself in someone else's place. I can kind of put all the events together and kind of see like if I was this person and I try to think of all the things I attribute to those persons and this ha happened to me or this was going on, what would I want or what would I do or whatever. The, the problem comes with that at the end is that um, I, I don't necessarily know what I should do with that information. So like if I relay somebody is in distress or whatever, um, I don't know, just because I understand then at that point that that might be what's going on, that doesn't mean that that translates in my head to what I should do about it. Because the thing is what other people usually want done when they're in distress is not what I want done. So um, that part of it is difficult. Even if sometimes I realize maybe it is what they want, like maybe they want a hug. I don't like touching people, so that's very hard for me. Um, and it took me a really even long time to even figure out that sometimes what people want. Um, and I'll try to think of an alternative thing to, to, to do for them, but not that they'll realize that's what I'm necessarily doing. Um, the other thing will happen is sometimes because I can see things from multiple perspectives, if people are indirect with me, I won't like, I'll be like, this person said this once and it meant this. This person said this once and it meant this. Um, but this person's now saying it and like, I, I, I see all these other perspectives it could be. I don't know, so um, especially before I was diagnosed, I would ask them, I would be like, you know, do you mean this? Do you mean this? And, and more often than not, their answer to me was like, you're overthinking it. I'm like, I'm maybe if I had known this about myself, I could have explained it. But I think a lot of neurotypicals think we're overthinking things when we say things of that nature. But, but we're really not like we're um we're just th those that's how our brain works like that I um, um I don't have that theory of mind where like I I, I can just like where it happens intuitively um I, like I said I, I study somebody and then I, I I learn but sometimes if they're not direct with me it that doesn't it doesn't immediately translate in my head so like the first time I, I, I encountered a situation, I don't, I have a difficult time seeing it from the other person's perspective. Um, like a, a good, a couple of good examples of this is um, I've had two websites in the last couple of years. I've taken them both down because initially, I, I, the the domain name that I gave for from them um, offended people, and I didn't understand why. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that, and then I think it might give you a little some insight. Like um, <clears throat> the first one. I, I was reading about how donate domain names. Sometimes, if you do some things like a um, SEO, like if you don't if you don't actually use like the, the words, if you if you make up you, you know like Google or or um, like Uber or whatever, like they come up with their own word for it, and then it becomes um, a Yahoo becomes um, attributed to them. So I was like, first I wanted to come up with a cool term for it, and it was actually initially I thought the thing that was wrong with me is that I just had a very much more masculine brain. I actually took this. Um, BBC um, sex ID test and the my score was that I had a very very masculine brain so I thought and I had this whole theory about being based in too much testosterone and that's why my the um, the, the lengths of my of my fingers are are, um, are very um, different from most other girls and and and, and all the stuff so first my theories I, I, I put this website to kind of discuss my theories on this and the domain name that I had was Sex Equation, and it was it was spelled S E X I Equation. Because in my head, I was thinking like, especially from taking that test, the sex ID, like I was thinking sex as in gender that the people will get that, and then sex I sex instead of E sex I Equation. So it was kind of like I was like, it's kind of provocative, so it'll catch people's attention, and they'll want to read it or whatever. Like that's how it translated in my mind, but that's not how people took it, and people thought it was like like a sex site or whatever and, and, and nobody except for weird guys were reading it um then the next so I took that down and then the next site I put up is I decided I wanted um I started painting and I wanted to put up my paintings and I wanted to write some of my philosophies which has now at this point this juncture kind of started to shift and, they, and I realized it wasn't just that I had a masculine brain it was something else I still hadn't gotten my diagnosis but I was kind of on the right path um, and I had in the late 90s I read this comic book because I'm really into comic books and sci-fi and stuff like that which I'll get into at some point I'm sure maybe even in this video um, and um, 
the, the name of the comic book was called The Minx. And what I liked about this comic book is it was about this girl who was this mild-mannered girl, and um, but she had multiple personality, a dissociative disorder, whatever. And one of her personalities was called The Minx, and it had superpowers, and it was very kick-ass. And I always thought that was cool, and I kind of thought that in Heroes, the reason why um, that one girl, the blonde hair girl, like had, she had the um, multi, she had the power where her, multi, her 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 alter ego had superpowers, and I think a lot of people thought that was cheesy, but I think they got that from the comic book, The Minx, and um, I always liked that, and I always always felt it was a duality about myself. Um, <clears throat> anyway, and so um, I kind of saw the the part of myself, the like rascal part of myself, the as as a minx, and um and uh, like like in her that this was just part of me that wanted to be like this girl where to kick ass or whatever, and I liked that. Um, but the the domain name the minx was taken, so I I added two X's, thinking X X X like she's extreme minx, so it was the minx triple X dot com. Again, <laughs> nobody saw that. Like I assumed everybody would get that because I read the comic book because I thought of it as extreme, that everybody would know that and understand exactly my thought process. And when nobody did, <laughs> it initially hurt my feelings, but I realized like immediately that they were probably right. I kept it for a while anyway, um, but, but then when I realized that that was just folly and foolishness, I, um, I took it down and now I'm gonna put up a new one, which I haven't done yet, but I will soon. Um, and, I, and I realized that I have to look at things, not just, I have to like study my audience and um, understand that they're not going to see things the way I see things. Um, and the way I started doing that a little bit is I started going on a lot of sites um, and, and posting some of the stuff before I like posted on my blog and seeing um, how people respond and if they were offended, um, then I knew that I needed to kind of tweak it and, and, and change it and try to um, make things that I said a little bit more palatable um, to the people reading it. Um, cause I realize I just don't see things the way other people do. And I think like going back to what I was saying a few minutes ago is that, um, the reason I think this is unique to people, um, with ASD is that we might initially see things, not see things, understand that people don't see things from our perspective. But once we get that knowledge, we, we don't filter it through biases. So it becomes, we don't discount any information. So, um, it all seems like it's empirical evidence and all it begins to pile up. And when we start to be able, when we, we, when we get enough information and we can see things from pretty much multiple perspectives, we'll, we'll change, we'll go in a different course and we'll let go of it. Like I think a lot of people will have an idea, whatever, and then the information they get, they try to fit into their agenda. And, 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 and no matter what information even goes the other way, they'll discount it and only the information that fits for their, for, 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 for their specific, specific purpose do they keep. I think that's very different for us um, with ASD. I think that we allow the data to um, guide us. So we might start off over here, but if the information goes in this direction, then we'll follow it and we'll allow it to take us down that path until it brings us to sometimes in a completely opposite new direction than where we started. Um, and, and, and because of that, it allows us then to become see things from multiple perspectives, um, which is just as um, difficult to utilize as seeing things from only a few people's, per like a few perspectives, like the way neurotypicals do. Um, because if you, if you see things from too many perspectives, I think that that can, that can put you in a state of paralysis as well. Um, I've been reading this book called so Social, and he talks about the theory of um, with autism, the reason why a lot of times we seem insensitive is, is due to um, over sense stimulation or, or, or over sense over sensitivity, and I know that that is definitely true for myself. It's not that I don't want to empathize with people a lot of times, just I don't know how, and sometimes I over empathize. So it, sometimes I seem like a little bit of a paradox, or like when I'm relaying stories, sometimes things that seem like they should be emotional, I relay very dispassionately. Um, but then when I do get emotional about something, one of the other things I have a problem with is pronoun. Um, confusion so I'll start telling a story about somebody else but then all of a sudden I'll actually it'll seem like I'm yelling at the person I'm talking to because I'll start being like and then you blah 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 and then I'm like you and, blah, and they're like me like I didn't do anything and I'm like no I'm talking about the other person or like I'll, I'll do that a lot of times where I just start to confuse the pronouns and it, and it confuses people so um, I'll get animated and, and what that causes me to do is, is to not relay things in an emotional way 
and when I, especially when I don't know somebody, it'll seem like it's an emotional story, but I'll relay it very dispassionately. And then to those people, I'll seem like a rover or a weird or like a female Sheldon. And that is not true at all. I just, um, so going back to, 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 to like my story a little bit, ever since I was a little kid, I always aspired to Spock. I didn't want to feel emotions. I didn't like them. They seemed to get in my way. They got in my way of thinking. They got in my way of, of um, contributing. They got in my way of dealing with people. And I wanted to be devoid of them, and I didn't understand why people like them. And in fact, like I, I feel like this is a good story that kind of um, might help give a little bit of insight. When I was a kid, um, so my sister's 13 months younger than me. My brother is um, 22 months younger than her, so she's a year younger than me. My brother's um, three years younger than me. And um, from when we were very little kids, it started. Then my, my brother's kind of like my sister's little minion. And um, she, like I said, it was is very different than me. Like she likes to she she likes to say that she's the queen of the manipulators. And on Christmas, she, every year to this point, she says that I ruined Christmas. I ruined Christmas, and <laughs> I see it very differently because what would happen is the um, the night before Christmas, Christmas Eve, um, well, the the morning before Christmas, at like three o'clock in the morning, my sister. Every Christmas this happened, starting when I was about five or six <clears throat> she would come in and she would wake me up and she would go let's go wake up dad and see if we can get open the presents early and I would be like what are you crazy dad the rule is we're not allowed to get up until six o'clock in the morning and then we can open the presents if we go now he will kill us because <laughs> he didn't get enough sleep and she's like if we go all together if we go um basically like it's all about solidarity or whatever um like we go together it and, 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 and present him like a um, uh, like a, a uniform front then then like then then um, he'll he'll capitulate I mean not that she was any of the words because she was little but she I mean that was basically the essence of what she conveyed to me and I was like no like have you met our father he will kill us like if we do that we'll get punished we won't be able to open our presents we probably won't like he'll 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 delay it we won't be able to open it till later like i don't understand like just go to sleep if you sleep the morning will come just like that and we'll wake up at six then we can open the presents but instead you're like you're, you're keeping me awake i'm gonna be tired you're gonna be cranky we're all gonna be cranky and you know whatever she'd be like you're such a um you're such a grinch you ruin christmas every year and to this day she will bring it up like every christmas she likes to bring up how i ruin christmas because I wouldn't go wake my father up. And I get frustrated, I'm like, what are you talking about? I saved Christmas. If it wasn't for me, you would have gone to dad, you would have woken him up, he would have flipped out, and then Christmas would have been ruined. And she just was like, oh, forget it, Brenda, you don't understand. <laughs> I feel like that story is, is very elucidating and like of, of, of the differences in how um, my sister and I operate. Um, and, you know, I was a loner as a child, I didn't have a lot of friends when I was little and I and I liked it that way actually but at the same time sometimes other kids would tell me that I, they didn't like me and that I was weird um, and that did bother me but the, <laughs> the way I dealt with it was also very interesting I remember um, like sometimes they would say that and I would be like why don't you like me what is it about me that you don't like that like you're just weird I'm like why I'm like why am I weirder than the other part like not that I even want to change whatever it is that you see in me that's defective but if I don't know what it is then I can't, I don't even, I'm not even given the, the um, opportunity to change it, you know what I mean, or work on it. And this is, this is like infinitely frustrating for me because um, I was constantly being told that. Um, but the thing is, like I said, I, I was, I was um, a very perceptive child. So what I, I did is I was, I would, um, I would study my sister and I would study other people and I realized that people really liked my sister. So I realized that a lot of times if I mimicked her, that I could, um, I could handle social situations a little bit better. Um, there's a delay to that and it can be exhausting so it's not something that I want to um, do constantly but a lot of times even now if I'm in a social situation and I don't know what to do I'll think to myself if my sister was here what would she say or what would she do and I'll do that um, and I don't like to do with people that I want to get to know and I want them to know the real me but if I'm like in an, an uber and the driver asks me questions that make me uncomfortable or um, or other situations like that, I just think like, what would my sister say in this situation? And I say that, and that has often um, saved me, I think, from um, potentially difficult situations. Um, so, 
there's that. So like I said, so when I was a little kid, I was like that. Then um, I started puberty early at, at age 10. I'm not going to get into all of that now, but just like, suffice it to say, it, nothing came in right together. Like I was very awkward. I grew as tall as I am now. I'm only 5'3", but I grew, I was 10 and I was 5'3", and I looked way too tall and, and gawky and gangly and weird and that's when the kids really really started to bully me and make fun of me and it was a very difficult time for me um but then all of a sudden when I was 14 everything kind of came in together just right and this was a interesting is how um, all of a sudden kids started talking to me that didn't want to talk to me before people started acting like they were my friends that they weren't my friends before, but they would act like they had been my friends for forever. And at first, like, I liked this, but then kind of like it dawned on me what was happening. And, um, and this gave me hint, insight into like the neurotypical mind. And I didn't like what I was seeing, I didn't like what this told me. Um, and then I saw that movie Heathers, and that. I related to the to the character of Veronica very much, and that, and it caused me a lot of resentment um, towards people. And I felt like school was like a job for me, and I wasn't who I really was. And I had to like study for it even more than I did for classes, and how to interact with people and all that kind of stuff. Um, the other interesting thing is I still had a hard time with her and things. Like I, my sister would want to go to a party with me, or whatever, and I would go and I'd bring um, a book. <laughs> and like usually a can of soda <laughs> and I would sit in the corner and I would read sometimes I would bring a blow pop and they would call it like I didn't realize till later why that was interesting um but they would call me like because I would pick a book and I would read at a party and that was considered very weird um but again like none of these things at the time led me to understand that I had ASD um back then girls weren't um being diagnosed and um that the type of um, things that are that are repetitive or ritualized for me are are um, I'll, I'll get into all that into another um, in another video, but I definitely have m many of them that I didn't even realize that's what they were until um, after my diagnosis. Um, the other thing is I do weird things in public. I I think that's the thing towards the end that um, caused me a lot of um, strife. The weird thing is it didn't give me as much trouble when I was at work, these types of things. And I think I, I worked at biotech and law, like scientists and engineers and stuff like that are, um, are you know, um, usually inherently weird in, in and of themselves anyway. So my quirkiness, my idiosyncratic behavior was never um, frowned upon there, that type of stuff. Um, whereas when I, um, after I got put on disability and I would try to do, go to social events, with people I didn't know, and they were like even more neurotypical than the neurotypical that I worked with, um, it, it caused me a lot of problems because like um, the things that I would do, that I would normally do to help me deal with stress um, and anxiety, um, were consider considered very antisocial and weird. Like uh, what I would do, I remember last year I went to an event. It was at a pub. It was in the summertime. And it was very hot. And the there wasn't music playing. I guess like the electricity was broken or something, something. And so there was no music and there was no um, AC. And it was very hot. And a lot of times w when I go to a place and it's crowded and there are a lot of people talking, if there's music, I kind of focus on the music and and it helps to to calm me, soothe me in a weird way. Um, but that wasn't going on here. And and I started to melt down. So I went into the bathroom and I do what I do, which is I take off my. I can't have anything touching me. If I'm at home, I go and I climb under my bed and I shut all the shades. But if I'm out, I can't do that. And, and if I can't be enclosed in a space, then I, I have to go into a space and I can't have anything touching me. So I have to remove all my clothes and I have to come, I either do this with my hands or I keep my hands apart from me and, and, um, and I kind of do this with my fingers and, and try to self-soothe myself. Um, but I was in the bathroom too long and I realized that was probably considered weird. So I, I left the bathroom, but I put my headphones on. And this is the other thing that I do people started commenting on and I didn't realize like how weird and rude or inappropriate it was until people started pointing it out to me and I sat down with the group of people I was talking to and um had my headphones on and I, I, was, I was having a hard time following what was going on I was really stressed the anxiety was surging and um and I closed my eyes and I just started bobbing and weaving and um it was to the music, but not that they knew that. But like that's what I do because I start to get like, and I just it just feels like like I, 
it feels like it's like calibrating me. I, I, I don't even know. And I think one of the things with people with ASD is it's not that we want to look weird to other people. I don't think that we're capable of seeing ourselves as other people see us. So it's kind of like a cat. You know how like like I, I my my sister's roommate used to have a cat, and I just always think it was hilarious how the cat would hide behind a remote. Like it would like it was it was really young, it was small, and it would hide behind the remote, and it couldn't see us. So it thought that we couldn't see it. So it was like ah, like I'm hiding from these weird humans, and I thought that was hilarious. But the weird thing is that actually all of a sudden I realized that it applies to me. That if I'm in these situations and I close my eyes and I, like I, in a, like, and I'm in my own head, it's like I don't think anyone can see me because I can't see them. And so all of a sudden the world goes away to me and I'm just in my head and that's all that exists. And I think that's kind of what happens. I, 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 that's the only theory that I can come up with. The, uh, the other thing that I, I know happened is like there was a part of me even before I was diagnosed that realized I didn't see myself the way other people do. I remember going to this argument with this one guy at work and he was telling me that I was acting like oddly and I was like I feel like my perception of reality sometimes is skewed like how other people make but it's like I have blinders on or like 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 I have like you guys have 2020 vision and my sight like is is um is 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 um is not clear like I I, I don't know what my prescription would be but um but like I keep bumping into furniture and like nobody will help me they just keep you guys keep reprimanding me and like don't bump in the furniture but nobody's like giving me a path to go down I'm like if you guys like give me a reality check like what if I'm if I'm doing something that's weird tell me what it is that's weird and I'll try not to do it anymore but nobody seems willing to to, to do that and, and like he was just he was basically his, his his response back was that I I needed to just know I, I needed to just know what to do and um, like learn he's like figure it out I'm like how can I figure it out if certain things I can but other things unless you guys tell me how am I gonna know you know what I mean um so that that wasn't a very sequential um retelling of my story there's a lot obviously a lot more to it than that but um you know that that gives you gives you uh, an idea the other th oh I'll, I'll give you one more thing the other thing is so I, love, I like I said I'm a voracious reader and um, of, of books of all kinds of different weird subjects and stuff but also like sci-fi and fantasy I also like comic books read lots of comic books um, and I love movies and movies a lot of times and literature a lot of times um, are my way of relating to people into life which is not always a good thing because um, I cause people always like to say to me Prenda you know that real life isn't a movie I'm like I know but movies are like a study of the human condition and they help me to understand people and so that's why I utilize them so I would make a lot of like references or, or quote things and sometimes people didn't even notice I was doing it like a conversation would be like 70% quotes and references to other movies and that's how I would like get by but one interesting conversation I had with this gentleman one time where he was trying to tell me that like it bothered him like that women were always saying that they were weak or or they weren't strong or whatever and um and I was like, I was like, I, I don't know why you're just applying this woman because I'm like, everybody is both streak, it's just strong and weak. I'm like, think about this. I'm like, do you remember in the movie Guardians of the Galaxy? I'm like, um, when when Ronan, Ronan was attacking, like they, the um, the, um, oh, what because the, of the Kree and crap, my brain is gonna go. But I'm like, they 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 had the um, they put up the shielding, um, and at first it seemed strong and it seemed impenetrable. But if you if you put enough pressure on, uh, on on anybody's armor, you'll find where the chinks and the weaknesses, and then um and and, and then um and then you'll be able to to um to basically t to eradicate it, to break it, to find where the weakness is, and um and and, and, and it will um it will crumble, um and you know the person might capitulate or whatever. And I said, and and it was like that applies to people that, that they might appear strong, or whatever. But if you apply enough pressure, especially in the right places. They're gonna um they're gonna fall apart, and that to to me that says that that you know um infers some type of of weakness, and this other gentleman was like, trying to keep it highbrow. Like, why would you use Guardians of the Galaxy as the analogy for this? And in my mind, I'm like, why does it matter whether I quote King Lear or or or, or, or bring up some kind of um you know like um the the um warrior queen Buddha and how she felt like what does it matter whether it's that or uh, you utilize this that's a perfect visual though to give you like a visual representation of it why does it why do I have to like 
do something that, that like that, that shows me to be whatever like highbrow more intelligent like that, that just seems silliness and that's a total neurotypical thing it's all about status and and like and, and raising your, your esteem in other people's eyes that if you use something like Guardians of the Galaxy or a cartoon or something animated or comic books that somehow you've 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 lowered your standing in their eyes and that seems like it's foolishness to me because all I was thinking is what is a good visual representation that to allow other people to see what I'm seeing um, and 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 so again like hopefully this will guys will give you guys some insight into my story and um, the the causes of my diagnosis and and uh, kind of a little bit of the story leading up to it all right um, thanks everybody have a good day bye